Hi, Debbie from Debbie's Crafty Hands here yet again. Welcome everybody, welcome all your new, my new subscribers. Um, hope you're enjoying what we've got for you so far. Today I'm going to be working on making a set of notelets, but I'm not going to make a full set. I'm just going to give you some ideas so that you can make your own set and work with what you have. And I'll give you ideas and suggestions to, to work within your what you have already or what your budget will allow you to have. Um, I'm going to be working with copy paper, which I have cut down in half um, and A6, not A6, C6 card envelopes, which will allow the... Um, folded paper to fit inside the envelope so that that's my sort of standard format for cards and envelopes etc etc now stickers are brilliant for this because you can have same but different these butterflies are all well this one's a smaller version of this one but you can have different sizes different and use it um within your set so for instance if you had say six um sheets of paper in your set you could also use colored copy paper which will give you um different colored paper normally you'd write your address to send to this side and your details this side so it's best to put your decoration in the center now that's quite a large butterfly so it depends on how much writing you want to do because sometimes you might want to use up the page if you have got a lot to write and that's a small one so let's pop this little one on there and oh, that came off easier than I expected that's good right. now are we in the center to get the center little trick um, just touch the corners together and you've got a little fold there and it'll give you an idea of where your centre point is oh no he wants to stick there slightly off centre but that's fine it's not enough to really worry about so now we've got our decorations on we might want to enhance the edges of the page um, give it a little bit of a crinkle edge or, or whatever now there's a couple of ways of doing that you can use your pair of scissors um, for instance I'll, I'll do it on this um, spare sheet so you can use a pair of scissors and just go your your own way and swirl in and out or you can draw a line to follow doesn't make it very even um, unless you want it very organic then that's great you know that gives you a, you might just want a straight edge but or you could use something like um, these scissors now I'm very fortunate that I was gifted a little while ago a beautiful set a carousel doesn't that look great they're beautiful of all different types of scissors um, cutting edges so this one's Daisy this one's got a lovely name inchworm there is bubbles royal and so and so forth this one's cloud nine so it's a bit and they've all got slightly different patterns to them zipper and today I've chosen inchworm um, but I don't don't know how expensive this set is but if you're going to be doing crafting then it may be worth investing in something or even just look in the charity shops and get odd scissors um, as you find them um, 
You could also use pinking shears. I think pinking shears are quite pricey in the, the shops, so these are a, a, a good alternative. I think sometimes you can get them for children, and as they're only for cutting paper, um, they're sort of children's safety scissors for different um, pattern cutting. Um, that might be another option also. So there's various ways you can get this sort of style of scissors. When you're using these type of scissors, you need to cut firmly to the end, then bring them right up and cut firmly again, matching your edge. And that way you get a nice pattern repeat. This one's a nice easy one to repeat, but if you had one that had, um, let me see, a bit more of a complicated pattern. Where's that more of one gone? Oh, this one's Bell. So this this one, you want to make sure you match up with the points up and down and have them going the, in the right direction. So you'd want to make sure that when you're doing your cut, you want to get the pattern repeat right. So that's another option. Now, another one round me, me a bit of paper. Some of you may or may not have an edge punch. Now they are brilliant for fancying up edge of pockets and things if you're doing junk journals or you know fancying up your tags but they're also good for edging your paper now you have to start towards the middle of your bit of paper to give you your initial cut push down nice and firmly and then you get that little bit um, now with the bit you've got you match up on this side or on the other side depending on which way you want to go first where it's got the pattern and it will show you and you just match the pattern along the holes and then press firmly again because it only cuts a little bit at a time and then you've got two lots of cuts and once again you can move across to match up your pattern to the end and then come back down the other way and match it up this side Ooh. yeah come on now I didn't quite get that right but I'm hoping if I can match it this end and match it this end but I don't know if I can because I think I didn't get it for far enough in, but we'll give it a go. Oh, it doesn't look too bad. So you have to be careful where you place. And it, it does produce a lot of bits and pieces. Let's just pop that in my paper bin. Excuse the reach. Oh. Okay, well that was successful. Didn't quite go where I wanted it. I'll pick that up later. Now another option, you can do rounded corners um, sim or cut out corners. So this is um, a corner punch that I have and there are different types. So this, this is the one I've used, it's a hobby craft one. Um, and you push your your paper into the corner do. Oh, that's our nice piece that hasn't got a corner left let me see where are we oh, this piece of dope oh, get all my fuddled and muddled muddled so. do that corner So that, that's a nice corner to have. Um, and all eight corners are quite pretty um, and they're just 
you can either do it just the one corner opposing corners or all four corners just the top corners you know what however style you'd like to do um, this is another option this one's I don't know who this is by but most of these I probably got from a charity shop or were gifted to me so I can't really tell you apart from the brand that's on there where I got them from and this one's rounded the corner and given me a little star if you weren't fortunate enough to have the um, one that does both maybe you've got a generic corner rounder now mine was from Vassen Creative and I've had this for years and it is a good little workhorse um, I use it um, for producing the stuff on on my Etsy shop um, making the cards up to put, to put the flowers on so uh, it's it's earned its crust but you could something like that is it's a good investment it's possibly on the pricey side for a single item but if you're going full with crafting then it's worth investing in now it doesn't particularly like single layer paper so let's put it it prefers card let's try and get the corners matching up and pop it in again now if you have that problem with a hole punch and you find that it's not punching very nicely it is even if it's an old magazine or something like that back it up with another couple of pieces of paper thinner paper and it should cut much better so that's you've got my nice rounded corners there now you could go in with um, these these little um, shape punches are fantastic not only do you get your shape like this has given me a little star here I can show you um, so that was from the first corner punch we did um, you can buy the stars separate and this one's slightly bigger and come in and do your own star corner et voila so you've got a big star and a little star and you get to use the, the cutouts as well so that, that's a, always save those bits and pieces because they will come in handy for other bits and pieces um, so, and you could possibly you know so you've got your rounded corners and so maybe you want to instead of decorating the edges like this you maybe want to you know have intervals and star all the way up and then have your own make your own edge punch so that's an option um, again if you're because Valentine's is coming up get yourself a little heart punch because they are so handy you can get can you see that yep So once again, you can come in and punch a little heart out. And again, you've got a heart. So we've got stars and we've got hearts and we've got stars. So we've got four stars. I quite, can't quite make all the star, um, stars and stripes of the United States but I'm working on it but that, those little ones cutouts would be handy for other things so I'm going to pop them in a little pot so they don't get lost in the paper scraps and once again you could work up the side with your hearts if you wanted to make a 
for a love letter. Right, I've just put my paper on my ink pad. That was very clever. I should have watched out for that, shouldn't I? Right, okay. So, envelopes, you can mark out the stamp area in different ways. So, this is a punch, an ed frame punch, that's what I was looking for. And this, I just did hand, freehand dotted lines. Decorate front and back. So, with our lovely paper, we can ignore the red ink on it. That's just my working progress one. So maybe you could put a butterfly down the bottom here to decorate your envelope coming into the page or into the envelope or on the back at the centre. But also to decorate your envelope or the edge of your paper, use washi tape. And washi tape is so many different um, styles. Uh, you can. So say we edge the flap of our envelope. We pop our butterfly on here. Then we've got our set of papers all nicely done. Um, the, the stamps and the washi tape and things like that, you can normally get them through Amazon, um, Wish, Timu, all those types of places will have a... Um, yeah, Etsy, will, uh, Etsy sellers that do... Um, you know crafting supplies within their shop um, I, I do flowers in my shop I don't do um, stickers but um, I do layered flowers and it's Debbie's crafty hands at Etsy.com if you wish to take a look and uh, have a little look at what I do so in order to match the butterflies with the envelope, you maybe want to... <laughs> I've blotched in the middle, but we'll ignore that for the moment. Could be a letter written in blood, couldn't it? Poor, oh, very sinister. But no, we're not going to go there. Um, another useful tool is a makeup sponge come in different shapes and sizes. I prefer this one, um, the egg shape, because you've more to hold on to. Although the little round ones can be used, um, but it's easier if you fold it and use it on the edge. So for instance, if you wanted to edge your scissor cutting, you just dab it in the ink and go on the edges and it just gives it a decorating your edges and you can go as far onto the page as you like um, you can you know do your your corners you can fade in Around the edges so you can edge your, your paper now these do crumb quite easily and I've got a bit of crumbs everywhere here so I'll shake them off the egg ones don't seem to crumb so much so th th these aren't my favorites but they can be used the egg ones are better they're a bit firmer to hold and you can pounce them 
they're great for stencils so for instance if you wanted a, that's not a stencil but it can be used as a stencil you can pounce it down and you've got a, a pattern from the edge of your, your paper I'm going a bit off track here but you can you can do clouds with it and just sort of shade with it especially if you have inks that blend together nicely you can make a nice shading and it makes your paper you know you can colour your paper quite quickly and effectively if you don't want the dark patches pounce rub off on your scrap paper and then come on now this is supposed to be a a red ink but i think there's brown on my sponge so try and keep eat one sponge for each color is a good idea as well so examples 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 um, on this one I've gone round in the green and I've just covered the corners um, I've stamped with my stamps on the envelopes so that's another, another a tip you can so you've got a maybe a set of stamps um, I'm talking silicon stamps here not postage stamps um, So this particular set um, is one of my favourites with the roses on and you have the long stem rose, you have the this beautiful rose here um, but this is just the right size so pick out, have a look through your stamps um, or when you're choosing stamps think how versatile is this stamp? Am I going to be able to use it on different things? Is it too big? Is it too small? So in order to get value for money for your stamps, then look at all those qualities with it so that you can diversify with it. Um, we did an episode recently on wrapping paper um, would it be handy to make my own wrapping paper with? Is it a nice pattern? Can I repeat it? Will it fit between itself? So one up here and then one down here or or however. Um, and to look at your images in a new light, you don't have to stamp the whole thing. So if I didn't want to stamp the stem, I could just come in from the corner. And just stamp on the corner or well, it's not a very good surface here let's try again hold it down for five seconds and bring it back up I'm double stamping now I'm um, ideally you need to stamp on a stamp pad um, which is a foam mat underneath your stamps which helps give you a squidge um, we'll work on the one we've got here just for our, our last few minutes let's put my ink away before I put my fingers in it or another bit of paper on it oh, fighting with it oh there's a leaf stuck to the bottom of that one okay leave it alone no too soon okay we'll go with that so you can once you stamp something color them in I'm just reaching around behind me here to get some nice colored pencils so you can take a shade dark, uh, lighter than your ink and just colour your petals in.
You don't have to colour it all in. You can just colour parts of it in. And you can use different shades of pink if you have them um, to give it a little bit of um, colour variation. quiet there I was constipating no not constipated concentrating <sighs> right that's the wrong end okay these are double ended ones these ones and they were a gift from my son a long time ago and the the Copic uh, well they're illustrated but they're similar to Copics Sometimes on the stamps it's difficult to tell what's leaf and what's petal, but I suppose in the long run you just make your own mind up <laughs> at the bottom of the picture. Right, that's me. This and that's the uh... Right, there we go. That's that's coloured in. So just a bit of a recap um, you can use stickers I mean you get stickers in a roll you get all sorts of stickers from Timu Amazon wherever you can find them in you know kiddies aisle depending on you could make a, a lovely writing set for a child um, for a man, maybe they want cars at the top rather than flowers. Um, you could decorate with gems, make them really fancy. You could put little ribbons on your flowers, you know. The, your imagination is your limitation. Let's put it that way. Um, for your envelopes you can even buy rolls of stickers um, to go on for your address now these stickers aren't that big but they'll have a they'll get a name so if you're not posting it you don't have to write a full address you can put the person's name on it um, in a later episode I'm hoping to show you how to make um, your own labels for envelopes and addressing envelopes etc um, using full sheet label paper a uh, bit of a spoiler there but you know look forward to that so we've done stickers we've done rubber stamps we've done edging with our lovely egg we've done corners we've done edging with our scissors and our punches around the side or our shape punches for ourselves oh goodness we've covered quite a lot haven't we um we've done shadings of various sorts i don't know what else can we do we'll have to wrap it up from here i think thanks for listening hope you enjoyed this episode much love and i'll see you in the next one Bye-bye for now.